When we go to retrieve sperm from a male, first we must understand, is this male producing high numbers of sperm but the system is blocked, or is he producing very low numbers of sperm? And so that is crucial in determining what type of procedure is used to retrieve or obtain the sperm from the male. If he has good sperm production and the system is just blocked, such as following a vasectomy with a male who's a known producer of sperm, then we do either the MESA procedure where we retrieve sperm from the tube at the back of the testis, or we can go directly to the testicle and do the TESI procedure where we take a small portion of the uh, meat of the, the testis and can extract sperm from it. That is testicular sperm extraction. If we take the testicle that produces sperm uh, as my fist and the area where sperm is first saved at the back of the testicle called the epididymis as my finger, this gives us some anatomic understanding of how we go about procuring sperm. Inside the testicle, there are about seven to 900 little tubes that make sperm, what I call the surface streets in guy talk. So low density uh, sperm production, but a lot of different little tubes making it. Those tubes all combine down to form this single epididymal tube that's wound up at the back of the testicle. That tiny little tube, in guy talk, I refer to as the interstate highway of sperm. There's a major traffic jam of sperm in the epididymal tube at the back of the testicle. And so, we can go after sperm a couple of different ways. One is to go to the epididymis and get high numbers and high quality of sperm. That procedure is called microscopic epididymal sperm aspiration. The quality is so good that we can freeze it. We do it at a time separate uh, from female fertility issues, from an IVF cycle. And so it allows the male to have it done whenever he wants. So he can plan it on a Friday, take the weekend off of work, and be right back at work on Monday because it's a very easily tolerated procedure. The negative of MESA, or microscopic epididymal sperm aspiration, is just that it's more expensive than the alternative procedure. That's really the only drawback because it is the gold standard for sperm retrieval. The alternative procedure is to go directly to the testicle. That procedure is known as testicular sperm extraction. Its cost is significantly less. It's at least half the cost of the uh, MESA procedure to just take it directly from the testicle. And so for many couples, cost is a very significant concern and I've developed that procedure in such a way that we do it in the office. It gives us lower numbers of sperm but the quantity and quality is sufficient for at least one cycle of in vitro fertilization. Whereas MESA, where we get it from the epididymis, is good for probably a half dozen cycles of in vitro fertilization. So each technique has its pluses and minuses, but these are the basic differences between them. NOAA, or non-obstructive azospermia, simply describes the situation where a male has low or no sperm production. Something that many people wonder about is, how can I be making sperm, yet nothing is showing in my ejaculate? And the answer to that is that the, the sperm, when it's first made inside the testicle, are not swimming. And the way they get from the testicle where they're produced to that first storage area called the epididymis at the back of the testis is by the push from sperm production itself. If there's not enough push by sperm production, the sperm simply sit inside the testis and never come to the outside world. In the male where we suspect or know that there is very low amounts of sperm production, we need to use a whole different procedure. This procedure is known as microdissection testicular sperm extraction or microtessi. We're actually in an operating room and open up the testis and look inside under very high magnification. And the little tubes inside, known as the seminiferous tubules, uh, that are producing sperm are fatter than the ones that aren't producing sperm. And so by looking for these fat tubes, we can very precisely pick out infinitely small 
uh, pieces of tissue, even a handful of sperm can be enough for a couple to be able to have fertilization, uh, embryo formation, and ultimately a pregnancy.